TV. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of MZ TV. I'm Martin Zender. I'm your host into an extravaganza today. This is going to be a real encouraging show. Uh, but first, you're probably surprised, shocked, maybe dismayed. I don't know to see me wearing a shirt with something written on it. I never do this, but my friend Manfred Jones, you've met him before. He went to Richmond, Virginia, and he bought me this shirt, and I think it is really cool. So this is something I'm actually willing to wear. As you know, the last camp conference we had uh, was in Richmond. Was that the last one? No, the last one was in Evansville, Indiana, but uh, the Richmond conference is an important one. We might be having that again. People are asking about conferences. If I'm going to have another one, I don't know for sure. Usually people have to twist my arm, but my arm is willing to be twisted. You know, I like to stay down here where it's warm and cozy, but I like to go out and meet the saints, so we will see about that. Ladies and gentlemen, I am more convinced than ever, and I have three suggestions to you. I can't exactly call these proofs, but they are strong suggestions that, yes, after the snatching away of the body of Christ, I believe, and I have to say I believe because I don't have definitive evidence in Scripture, but hear me out. This is going to comfort many of you. You've heard me say this before, but it's time for you to hear it again. Because every day that goes by, we are getting closer to the snatching away of the body of Christ. This is the next big thing on God's Aeonian calendar. It's coming to get the body of Christ and take them to their realm of ministry, which is among the celestials. I love how Paul describes it. There are a few people watching this show who laugh at this truth. And they laugh at it because it seems so fantastic, and I admit it does. But never has Paul written so plainly than he does in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. I've gone over this with you before. The dead in Christ rise first. Thereupon we who remain to the coming of the Lord will rise together with them, will be changed in an instant. It's just so practical, and it's so understandable. It's very simple. I realize it's difficult to believe. But I believe now, I used to think that the snatching away would occur in the middle of the tribulation. Now I think it's going to occur at the beginning of the tribulation. I'm basing some of that on some excellent uh, work done by Aaron Welch, our brother. Why don't I link you to those articles? I'm going to link you to those articles uh, below here. And then one of these days soon, I'm going to go point for point in his our articles these articles are about his conviction that the body of that 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 the body of Christ has no business being on this earth when God starts up again with Israel and the key thing that is going to initiate the fact of God starting again with Israel is a peace treaty is a an agreement between the man of lawlessness whoever that may be and Israel as you know I think that the kingdom of God is coming to earth in the year 2028. Could I be wrong? Yes. Do I think I'm right? Yes. But I don't know for 100% sure. But here's going to be a unique situation. We are going to be snatched away before the tribulation begins. This earth is going to be going through the worst trial it has ever been through. Jesus said, since the earth come, came into existence, nothing like this has ever happened. I'm obviously paraphrasing him. And it has to happen sometime. And I've given you all the reasons why I think 2028 is the kingdom begins on earth. It's exactly 40 jubilee years from the time of Christ, 2,000 years, and it's 6,000 years from Adam. And these numbers can be accounted for. And, of course, the, the consolation of September 23rd, 2017. I believe we are the people, that we are the last generation that the last member of the body of christ is going to come in soon and once the body of christ is snatched away there ain't no more no more members of the body of christ so here's the situation this means that your loved ones i hate to say this this is a difficult topic but according to paul there is a generation that will not die he says we shall not all die he says that in first corinthians 15 yet we will all be changed in a moment, in the casting of an eye at the last trump. And he reviews it again in 1 Corinthians 15. The Lord will descend from heaven with a shout of command. And the voice of the chief messenger, just 
amazing epicness. And this is going to happen, I believe, to us. But in the meantime, we're going to leave behind loved ones, people who we tried to give the evangel to. I have dear, dear friends, people who I love who are very close to me, and I try to tell them, and they don't want anything to do with it. And in the case of my son, Paul, I'll speak frankly about this. I've already done it, so why stop now? As you know, my youngest son, Paul, is a member of the Christian religion. Even though I taught him the truth, he's in it wholesale. I have a grandson and another one on his, on his way. And I told him that, son, unless you know, I, I put it in practical, relative terms, I said, the gospel of Paul, and funny, you were named after the guy, is the only escape out of the coming indignation. But he can't hear it. He doesn't hear it. I said, you are leading your family, your wife, and you're, you're leading them into the tribulation. Tribulation is as real as the snatching away. And these things are related. Because as Paul says in Romans chapter 11, he says, um, Israel has been made calloused until the fullness of the nations comes in. That is, I interpret that in Romans 11.25 as the last member of the body of Christ coming into the body of Christ. And then God takes up again with Israel. And the next big thing to happen with Israel after the next big thing that happens with us is the tribulation. They're going to be going through seven years of hell on earth. Especially the last three and a half. My proposition to you is that we are going, after we're snatched away, we are going to be able. And people are, are so worried. Like, I'll never be able to go back to the earth. I want to go back to the earth. Who says we can't? I believe that we are going to be able to come to the earth during the tribulation as immortal beings and to help our loved ones through. It's not that we're going to grasp them by the hand and pull them up into the celestials. No, because there are no more members of the body of Christ after we're changed. That's it. It's done. No more. There's a last member of the body of Christ, and when the snatching away happens, all of Paul's letters are worthless. Do you understand that? Worthless except maybe as a testimony that stands and people can look at it and go, ah, I could have had that. It could be used for that to help bring people to a realization of the truth of what they missed. I'll give you three reasons why I think we're coming back to help our loved ones. None of this constitutes proof, but I think it constitutes strong indications. Number one, when Jesus Christ ascended to heaven after his death and resurrection, he came back to earth for 40 days to help his little orphaned disciples to manage their way. They, they were lost. And what if he had never shown himself to them? They might have bought into the lie that the Romans stole the body. But he appeared to, to uh, Mary in the garden, and then he appears to the, to the 12, to the 11, and then... I guess it was to the 10. Judas was already dead. And then in comes Thomas and they eventually see him. And he tarries with them 40 days. Why? To help them. And remember, when he raises from the dead to go to his father, he's in his celestial being mode. We don't know what that looks like, but it's not the, the carpenter from Nazareth. But when he comes back to earth, he looks like a human. They recognize him. But he walks through the wall. He walks through the wall. And he disappears at will. Wasn't doing that before his death. And he helps them. And he brings them. And the Holy Spirit comes on them also. So they get a double dose. They get the Holy Spirit. They get Christ. And they get, then they get the Holy Spirit. So if Christ comes back to help his loved ones, that's, that's an indication that it's not a crazy idea to think that we would come back after we're glorified, after we're made immortal, to help our loved ones through a time that is going to be worse than the time the disciples went through. You understand the tribulation is the worst thing that the earth will ever endure. It's far worse than anything the disciples were going through. And even those who were being killed by the sword, crucified, stoned, this is going to be worse. So would God leave them these are especially our loved ones bereft of help while we are what are we gonna what are you telling me we're gonna be immortal in the heavens and just loving it yeah we're soaking it all up i'll have my richmond shirt on I'm like yeah this is it i'm completed and we're not gonna be concerned about our loved ones 
That's the first thing. Second, the Joseph parable. I gave a talk once and I said, if you want to know what your future is, look at the Joseph parable. The God, you, people complain. I, com, I myself complain. Like, why didn't God tell us more about what we're coming into? Why don't we have a, a roadmap? Why don't we have a blueprint of what we're doing? And God said, I gave you Joseph. What do you want? If you look at the, all the details of Joseph, it's a type of Christ for sure. Rejected by his family, shunned, killed, basically. Joseph was killed in type. Christ was killed for real. And then coming back and he says, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. That's what Christ said from the cross. And then Joseph says to his brothers, you meant it for evil. God meant it for good. Enter into my rest. And they become celebrities in Egypt. He did that for them. But my point is, as far as the peril, that's your that's your future you understand that? that is your future we've already come past the death part because we were crucified with christ so we've already been sold to the ishmaelites already been there done that now we are in egypt we're we're in jail okay yeah we, we really our parallel now is joseph in jail joseph accused by potiphar's wife joseph sweeping the floors of the jail that's where we are now but there is a day coming and it might be tomorrow it might be today it might be this weekend. Do you know that Joseph was 27 years from the time he was sold to the Ishmaelites to the time he rose to power in Egypt? There was a day when Pharaoh had a dream. And one of the men who had been restored, I can't remember which one it was, the, the butler or the baker, I think it was the butler he went to pharaoh and he goes you know i remember a guy I was with in jail and he was an interpreter of dreams i had a dream and he interpreted it and it came exactly true pharaoh said bring me that guy bring me that guy that happened on a day after 27 years joseph was lifted up out of prison and put in charge of pharaoh's kingdom second only to pharaoh you see the parallel there's coming a day when we're going to be lifted out of prison taken to the throne room and put in charge of everything everything second only to the throne of god joseph had everything pharaoh said i spare you nothing except the throne except the throne that's our future and then what does joseph do his brothers come in to to famine they come in to trial and he saves their lives that's the second reason i think that we if we're the type of joseph you might say, well, yeah, Martin, that's in the future. We're going to reconcile the universe to God, all the celestial beings. Yeah, but I think there's a closer reality. There's a closer parallel than that, and that is our loved ones on earth who are dying. Joseph, these were his brothers, his father, his kin. Oh, I want to say this too. When Jesus came back, who did he go to? He, go to, he went to those he loved on earth. He didn't go to the high priests. He didn't go to strangers on the street. He went to his friends. He went to Mary, his beloved Mary, who he met at the tomb. Then he went to his 12 friends, his dearest friends. That's what Jesus Christ did. And so we are going to go to our dearest friends, I believe, our family, our loved ones. And I talked to Matthew yesterday about this. He said, you know, I, I got a list. I got a list of people that I really would love to see. I would love to help. And again, it's not like we're going to take them out of it because they can't be taken out of it that we can help them through it we will have power over the plagues you ever heard of the passover ah, that's a hint the death angel came through but the houses of the israelites were spared because they had a blood on the doorpost and the death angel passed over how would you like me to rid your house of the locusts i have power over a polyon The ruler of the submerged chaos. Uh, he, he does what I tell him to do. We'll be able to do that for our loved ones. Third of all, I'll put the verse here because I don't remember it offhand, but Paul said, I has not seen nor ear heard that which God has prepared for us. So your ear is hearing something now that would be so wonderful 
that you're saying, I hope this is true. I really hope this is true. Well, Paul says that ear is not heard nor I seen those things which God has in store for us. That is, it's beyond what we can say. It's beyond what we can imagine. It's beyond what we hope for. I mean, I really hope for this. I have a list too. Every one of you has a list. And yeah, there's going to be a little bit of the how do you like me now thing. There's going to be a little bit of that. That was Joseph, we know, tried his brothers before he revealed himself to them. I think we will be held. If this is a parallel, if the Joseph is a, is a parallel, and it is, it's a blueprint. That's just not some random story, some random account that God put in the scripture. We're supposed to look at that blueprint and say that's Christ and that's us. It's Christ and it's us because we're sons of we're sons of God. We're brothers of Christ. So if this is a perfect parallel of Christ and everybody recognizes the type of Joseph as a type of Christ, killed by his family, killed, killed by the very people he loved, gets sold into slavery, gets killed, comes back, glorified, and comes back to help him and saves him from famine, saves him from famine. You, you get the parallel? That's us. But eyes not seen nor ear heard. So God is going to do above and beyond. Oh, there's another verse. I'll put that there. God will do above and beyond anything. That's even an even an even a better verse now that I think about it. God will do above and beyond anything we hope or expect. So eyes not seen nor ear heard. God's going to do above and beyond anything we can hope or expect. So if I'm hoping, if I'm telling you about this, it's going to be better. So really, I'll be bold to say this. How can God not do it? How can God not do that? And there's actually a fourth thing. And, and here it is. And I'll, I'll end with this. The fourth thing is it the extremities. The earth is going to be experiencing the most extreme pain and horror it is and, and turmoil and tumult it has ever been through. Unprecedented. Off the charts. No precedent. That's what un, unprecedented means. I mean there's no precedent for it. You can't look back and say this is this happened before. And at the same time, they're going to be human beings who are in the celestial realm, whose bodies have been changed, and they've been taken as immortals to a sphere where we cannot at presently operate. Never happened before. Paul went into the third heaven, but he didn't go as, in, as an immortal. He went to peek at it. John went to the third earth, so he's out of the running here. But Paul just, but no, no human beings ever, ever in the history of God's created universe has been taken to the celestial realm. So that's unprecedented. And what do you know, this corresponds with an unprecedented time on earth, an unprecedented time of trial. My point is all bets are off. All bets are off. No one can say, well, that'll never happen. Why? Why would you say, oh, it's too fantastic to think that we'll come down to earth. It's too fantastic. Didn't you hear what I'm talking about? How fantastic? The whole thing is fantastic. The whole thing has never been done before. There are no more rules. There are no more rules. All bets are off. We got human beings in the celestial realm for the first time ever, and we have locusts stinging people and supernatural horsemen from the submerged chaos killing a third of the earth. Hmm. Never seen that before. So for unprecedented, unprecedented times, God does unprecedented things. And I think that what he's going to do is send us to our loved ones to assist them and to save them through. Not take them out of, but to save them through the day of indignation. And may that comfort you today and in the few days that remain until our snatching away to the right hand of God.